If you want to make clothes that feel luxurious and intentional, then vintage patterns and vintage styles are a great place to look for inspiration. So today, Haley and I are going to show you five vintage details from the 1950s that you can incorporate into any sewing project, be it modern or vintage. We also recently released a video with five vintage details from the 1940s, so if you haven't checked that one out, we'll put a link to that below as well. And be sure to stay to the end to see our favorite vintage detail from today and how you can achieve it. All right, Haley, what is it that you think makes the 1950s so special when it comes to fashion? Well, when we talk about fashion and trends, we often talk about kind of the pendulum and the way that mm -hmm. it swings. So we talked about in our last video about the 1940s, and I feel like in the 50s, you see the pendulum swing opposite from like the, the deprivations of the 40s into a more opulent style. And that's not just stylistically, also fabric usage, was far grander in this decade. Mm -hmm. And it was a time of high consumer culture, mm -hmm. a lot of opulence generally, mm -hmm. uh, a time of prosperity in the United States at least. And I think values kind of shifted during yes. this time. So the pendulum of fashion shifted, but so did the values of the time. And you see that reflected in the fashion. Absolutely. You definitely saw more defined gender roles mm -hmm. at this time. So whereas a lot of women had gone to work in the United States in the 1940s, in the 1950s, and there was a return to this sort of glorification of femininity, of traditional femininity. I think you can see this reflected in the specialty undergarments, the silhouettes and shapes, but also the highly feminine details, which you're going to see a lot of today. What's also interesting, though, and why I like pulling inspiration from this decade, is that you don't need to conform to these kinds of traditional values in order to enjoy all of these um, beautiful little details, you could actually incorporate them in really clean, modern ways. And even if you don't, I know that a lot of people who are into vintage fashion get these kinds of questions where people think that because they love fashion from the 1950s, they must subscribe to values from the 1950s, and that's mm -hmm. simply not true. Well, let's get into these patterns and these details then. Yeah, so these patterns are from my own collection. This is part of my collection of vintage patterns. Um, and today we're gonna be examining the ones from the 1950s. This is just a few examples. Okay, the first one I wanted to share is this pattern, which incorporates a border print in a really interesting way. So it takes uh, a fabric that has a border print and uses it both as a skirt, so it's got a dirndl style skirt, which is a gathered skirt that's basically a gigantic rectangle, um, and the border print goes along the hem here. So because it's just a rectangle, you can cut it straight across and the border print falls really nicely across the hem of the skirt. And this is something you don't even need a pattern for. If you have a border print fabric, you could do that yourself very easily. But they also use the border print along the, uh, the neckline here. So this is a kind of a surplice wrap style, so sort of a faux wrap style. And the border print is used right along the neckline to really emphasize that. Uh, and I think it looks just beautiful. And you don't have to be just restricted to border prints. You could even use an eyelet that has a decorative border. Um, sometimes eyelets come with those kind of scalloped uh, borders, and that would be really lovely as well. And what I like about this is that all you need is a pattern that has a straight hemline. Mm -hmm. And then it's no pattern hacking, no nothing. It's just a difference in how you cut your pattern pieces. Mm -hmm. All right, the next one I wanna share from my collection is this advanced pattern from the 1950s, which has a very traditional shape with a fitted bodice and a full skirt. What I like about this one and what I think is interesting that you can incorporate, uh, in addition, this one actually also has a border print option, but you could also use an overlay, which is what has been used here. So this dress has a lace overlay and the way something like this would be constructed is you'd basically underline your uh, your bodice here so that it's it's lined but the seams don't show on the inside mm -hmm. and then for the skirt you're just sewing kind of two layers of skirt so you've got your uh, your regular kind of um, lining piece here and then you've got this big fancy lace overlay so that's one way to do an overlay another way to do an overlay uh, as you can see on this other pattern, is to actually just sew a slip to go under a sheer dress. This pattern is a McCall pattern. It's it's pretty torn up, unfortunately, but it has this just beautiful lightweight lace over gown and then 
underneath it, it's got a slip. So you can do a two piece like this, or you can underline it and do an overlay in this fashion like this. I really quite like the flexibility that the slip option mm -hmm. offers. I feel like you have a little bit more options in the kinds of silhouettes that you can create when you're using this style rather than having a static underlining. So of course here we have the lovely 1950s silhouette. It's quite nipped in in the bodice and at the waist. But if you were to translate this to a modern pattern, you could use more of a column style dress sewn up in lace and something like a bias cut satin mm -hmm. slip underneath just to create a different silhouette. I think a lot of times people think of this decade and they get really caught up in that silhouette and you can borrow these details without doing a direct copy paste. Mm -hmm. Another thing you could do, which I think is a really interesting um, idea, is to do your underlay piece, so your slip in a patterned fabric, a printed fabric, mm -hmm. with a beautiful like floral print on it, and then do a solid sheer overlay on top, which I think would be really cool, really interesting, mm -hmm. and also a little bit more modern. So that's another option. And if you want to learn more about overlays, we have a great article all about how to sew overlays. So if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of how to do that, mm -hmm. we'll link to that in the description below. And if you want to learn about underlining, we also have an article all about underlining. Underlining is a great technique that's useful for things like sheer overlays, but it's also useful in a lot of other contexts just for adding body to your fabric. So we'll link to that below too. Okay, the next one I want to share is a simplicity pattern. And the really cool detail that you could incorporate from this one is the rickrack trim. So this one has rickrack sewn all along the skirt, the top of the skirt around the hip, and then also has rickrack sewn along with what looks like maybe a bias tape or more of a straight trim along the neckline. Um, and I think rickrack is kind of an underrated trim that people Agreed. don't use as much these days, although mm -hmm. lately I have been seeing it in use by some designers in like bright colors just to kind of add mm -hmm. really interesting fun details. So instead of like a striped fabric, mm -hmm. there's rickrack sewn on. So it's a great trim to add kind of a colorful, interesting, almost whimsical touch yeah. to your clothing. I also love when you can find rickrack in the really jumbo size. I think that can be really fun and graphic and modern along the hemline of a skirt or something like this. Something that I'm really fond of in this pattern is how they're utilizing different size trims to create a little bit more depth at that neckline. And you could use that with bias tape, you could use that with rickrack. Mm -hmm. um, they're combining textures and widths to create something that's a lot more dynamic. Mm -hmm. All right, this next pattern from my collection is this advanced pattern from the 1950s. And it's got this full pleated skirt and a fitted bodice once again, so that traditional 1950s style. But the interesting detail that I think you can incorporate from this one, so it has bound edges, so all along the neckline, the front, and the sleeve, you've got this binding, and then it has these, uh, or it could be piping, it's possibly piping, and then it's got these little ties here right at the shoulder. So that's something you could do. You could take your, uh, if you're making something with bias binding, you could take that binding and turn it into little ties. Mm -hmm. If you're doing piping, then you could make some covered cording and make little bows and put them here. But the idea is basically to have two kinds of trim like this made from the same fabric. And mm -hmm. I think it just looks so cute. And this is another place that you can play with a little bit of texture, a little bit of contrast. Um, in this purple sample, you can see that it's made in a self fabric, but in this pink and white one, there is just solid pink trim used to accentuate the neckline and the sleeve here. You could even use a, two different prints. So mm -hmm. if you want, we're making a floral dress and you wanted to make, use a like a smaller scale floral um, just to trim all of the edges, that would be really lovely too. And I think that a lot of times we think of trim like this as being very graphic. And again, it doesn't have to be graphic. It could be textural with the use of print. It could also be tonal or really we're just bringing our eyes to the details here. And you can do that in as grand of a way as you want or in a more subtle way. All right, so the last one that I wanna talk about, which I think is my favorite from today, is this beautiful simplicity pattern and this one says it's a truly teen style, which I guess means it was designed for teenagers. Mm -hmm. It has definitely a very youthful uh, look to it. 
So this one has really cool ruffles that are sewn into these gathered shoulder seams. And it's also got ruffles around this shaped pocket. Um, so it's got these huge heart-shaped pockets with ruffles sewn all along the edges. I actually sewed up a little step out so that we could see this ruffle in a more modern context. So here I have a ruffle that is sewn into a seam. I simply took some of the self fabric and cut a strip, folded it in half and gathered it. This is a two to one gather ratio, which means that the ruffle itself is twice the length of the seam that it's being sandwiched in. Um, but you can play with gather ratios here. You can play with the width of the ruffle itself. You can play with gather ratios to make something that feels a little bit more subtle or something that is a little bit more bold. And what I like about this detail is it just feels like something you can incorporate in practically anything. Some ideas for places you could put a ruffle like this on the example pattern. It is used on the shoulder seam. You could certainly do that. You could add it to the waist of a pattern would be really lovely. You could add it to, it doesn't have to be on an open application like this. You can also add it to the neckline of something or the hem, um, the top edge of a pocket. Really the sky is the limit here. Mm -hmm. So I think from all this inspiration today, the one that calls out to me is definitely the border print. And I could see using this on a dress like Benning or on Leanne, something that has um, a, just a rectangular gathered skirt. Mm -hmm. um, I would use a border print to go along the bottom of that. Uh, or maybe an eyelet. I think I'm really into eyelet right now. So, so I think pretty. eyelet would be just gorgeous and use that scallop trim at the bottom for the hem. And I would have to say that the one I'm feeling most inspired by is this little McCall's number with the um, separate slip and then lace overlay. And I think that this would be really fun to experiment with two different patterns. I think for the overlay, the lace overlay or maybe chiffon, you could use the Seamwork Mica, which is a more caftan style oversized silhouette, which would be really like lovely and mm -hmm. inspire lots of swanning around, you know? Mm -hmm. And then for underneath, I think I would use a Seamwork Grace, which is one of our bias cut slip dresses, which would just be really lovely. That would be beautiful. So we'd love to hear what your favorite detail was today and how you would use it. And if you want access to these patterns that we mentioned today, plus over 200 other sewing patterns, you can join us over at Seamwork and you can get a 50% off discount just for being a YouTube follower. So we'll put a link to that discount in the description below. And we'll see you over at Seamwork. Oh, oh, oh.